Hello and welcome to Saltwire Today for Thursday, January 5th. I'm your host, Kate Walker. Halifax Regional Police are investigating what they call a suspicious death. Officers were called to a report of an injured person inside a home on Herring Cove Road shortly after 8 o'clock last night. They found a man who was pronounced dead at the scene. There's no word yet on any suspects. There's a push to speed up the process of raising minimum wage in Nova Scotia. The province's Minimum Wage Review Committee has submitted its report with recommendations on the minimum wage rate with a faster path to $15 per hour. We know um, with the pressures on, on Nova Scotians and the way that inflation has been and stuff that people are under a lot of pressure. So, so I definitely thank the, the committee for their work um, and we'll take the opportunity to seek input, uh, input from the community and we'll go from there. Here's a breakdown of the suggested timeline in the committee's recommendations. An increase of 90 cents an hour to 1450 on April 1st, an increase of 50 cents an hour to $15 on October 1st, and starting April 1st, 2024, the minimum wage would be adjusted on April 1st every year by the percentage change in the projected annual national consumer price index for the previous calendar year plus an additional 1%. I mean, I think it's a sensible approach. I think the challenge that we have is that even if we get to $15 next year and then take the CPI approach that's described, we still don't see a horizon where we get to a living wage. Depending on where you are across the province, you may have woken up to snow this morning, some more than others. While the weather statement is no longer in effect, we're still in store for a wintry mix of snow, ice pellets and freezing rain. Our weather specialist Alistair Alders has more on the impact overnight and what's to come. Thanks, Kate. Well, we've been talking about how with the system there would be sort of two waves of energy. The first was expected to impact western Nova Scotia last night into this morning, and then a second wave expected to impact the entire province tonight. And that is exactly what happened. We can visualize this on the satellite and radar imagery. This is a 12-hour loop going into the early afternoon today, and you can see precipitation did move into southwestern Nova Scotia and make it as far east as Halifax, as was predicted. Now, there was a messy mix of weather with this system. On the northern edge, some snow and ice pellets, which is what moved through Halifax uh, during the overnight hours into the morning today. We also had a mix of freezing rain over interior areas of the south shore of Nova Scotia, making for tricky travel there, and then rain directly along parts of the coast on the south shore of Nova Scotia. You can also see on that radar some bands of snow in areas further east, but a lot of that was not hitting the ground, so there wasn't snow over parts of eastern Nova Scotia and other parts of the Maritimes this morning. Now, in terms of how much snow we received from this initial band, it was generally what was expected. Some volunteer reports of one to three centimeters in parts of the Annapolis Valley into HRM, not a whole lot with a few locally higher pockets and really not expecting a whole lot more in terms of accumulation with the second wave that will be moving through tonight. And we'll break it all down with your weather timeline and a look at the additional snowfall forecast uh, in just a bit. Kate. And Alistair will have more on what's expected for the rest of the province tonight into tomorrow coming up in the weather section. The Nova Scotia Police Review Board hearing into the complaint of Kayla Borden against two Halifax Regional Police members wrapped up today. HRP Chief Dan Kinsella testified today, saying it was not lost on him the impact and shock involved for Borden, a 35-year-old black woman who was stopped and arrested in a case of mistaken identity on the night of July 20, 2020. Borden and her lawyer say apologies aren't enough and it's time to put words into actions. Wrongdoing needs to be found in this case, that uh, the stop was unlawful and that there was racial profiling involved. Uh, that's been maintained from the beginning. Uh, racial profiling isn't simply some overt act by the police. It could be just in how they treat somebody. Why didn't they release this person right away? Why didn't they go through an actual investigation of details of the vehicle that was on the radio before actually making an arrest and handcuffing her, surrounded by a bunch of white officers only months after the killing of George Floyd? You know, it's, it's a very frightening scenario that she was in. The complaint is actually against the whole um, Halifax Regional Police Department um, because this continues to happen um, to people in the community um, and they don't see that this is a racial issue. Um, so yeah, it, it's not just against two police officers. Board panel members await closing submissions from the lawyers involved and will likely issue a decision sometime in the spring. 
It's time now for a glimpse of today's Thinking Out Loud with Sheldon McLeod. Today, Sheldon is speaking with Paul McKinnon with the Downtown Business Development Commission about the World Juniors. I'm not a huge hockey fan, but it's hard not to get excited, especially when you see Canada beat the Americans to make it to the gold medal game. So that and in Halifax, this is really good. How are things downtown? Things are booming downtown. Uh, and I think, you know, it's one of those things. I think, I mean, there's obviously we have a lot of hockey fans, uh, but even if you're not a hockey fan, we're getting lots of feedback from people that just they're enjoying the energy and the buzz. Uh, this couldn't have come at a better time. Uh, and the nature of the tournament is because it's a tournament. Lots of people have tickets for, for all the games. And so there's a lot of downtime uh, where people are spending time downtown. They're here with families. So they're looking for places to eat, places to shop, things to do with the kids, going to the Discovery Center or the Maritime Museum of the Atlantic. So it, it's beyond just a sporting event. It really is kind of a, you know, Know, this this great you know all encompassing event uh, for for people to really enjoy downtown whether you're actually going to the games or not and people are, are coming downtown they're watching games from from a local bar or restaurant they're going to Rogers Square where the where the games are showed uh, on the big screens there uh, for free um, so yeah it's just it's a really nice uh, really nice environment uh, post Christmas it couldn't have come at a better time for downtown and for Sheldon's full conversation head to the opinion section of saltwire.com. Time now for the Atlantic Sports Wire, presented by Scott Squires. A big win in the semifinals last night for Team Canada at the World Junior Championship. They defeat the U.S. 6-2. Andrew Flynn lives in St. Margaret's Bay. He was at last night's game. Andrew, what was the experience like being at Scotiabank Centre? Well, it was uh, it was electric atmosphere, of course. It was, um, you know, the last time I experienced anything like that was in 2003. Um, I think the big difference between 2003 is now is, is Bedard, frankly, just because the excitement around when you see the, and I have a, it's kids now and my son plays hockey. So I see it kind of through his eyes a little bit too. And we're watching a generational player. As best you can describe that experience or that feeling of being in 10,000, almost 11,000 people when Canada scores, the roar goes up, heave away plays as best you can. What was that experience like? What did it feel like for you? Well, you and I, we were chatting before this, um, before the interview, and you, you mentioned that you've been to some big venues, and, and I have too. I've been to the Bell Centre, I've been to Maple Leaf Gardens, I've lived in Europe for a long time, I've, I've been to the Spengler Cup in Switzerland, I've, uh, I've been to some world championships in Paris and, and um, in Denmark. Nothing like it, just nothing like it. Andrew, appreciate your time today and for sharing your experience being there last night for Canada's semifinal win over the U.S. And uh, go Canada, go. Go Canada, go, absolutely. Team Canada plays for gold tonight on TSN. In Halifax, I'm Scott Squires for the Atlantic Sports Wire. Thank you, Scott. On to weather now to see what's coming up in the forecast. We're going to check back in now with our weather specialist, Alistair Alders. Hi again, Kate. Well, the main energy with this trough of low pressure will be moving eastward across the province tonight. I want to reiterate this is a weak low pressure system. It's not really a storm. However, the precipitation types with ice pellets and freezing rain certainly uh, making for the potential for tricky driving conditions if you do have to be out on the roads. But let's take a look at the weather timeline as we go through tonight into tomorrow. And you can see that precipitation does move eastward across the province tonight in the form of snow mixing with ice pellets for northern areas of Nova Scotia across the North Shore into Cape Breton and a mix of freezing rain and rain along the Atlantic coast of Nova Scotia into the southwest corner of the province. As we move into Friday morning, this precipitation will slowly start to clear from west to east throughout the day and the bulk of the snow will be over Cape Breton in the morning. The mix of rain, freezing rain or ice pellets clears western areas, as I mentioned, fairly early. And for the most part, we are done with this system as we head into the afternoon. However, the trough will be lingering as we head into Saturday. So we could see some patchy bands of flurries or light snow that do stick around as we head into Saturday. Um, as temperatures will be falling back cool enough to support uh, snow or flurries for everyone. In terms of how much additional accumulation we can expect tonight, the most will be over, of course, northern and eastern Nova Scotia, where we could see about two to five centimeters with local pockets up to up to 10 centimeters, especially if you are in Cape Breton. Really not a whole lot in terms of accumulation, further accumulation for uh, western Nova Scotia along the Atlantic coast of Nova Scotia, including here in Halifax, where there will be that mix, that icy mix, and as well a transition over to rain. And I've been mentioning to wind, not a big deal with this system generally gusting up to 50 kilometers per hour but certainly if you do have to 
travel as you go through tonight into tomorrow. Do take care on the roads. Obviously, uh, freezing rain is a big concern because it falls as rain. It lo just looks like rain, but freezes on contact with surfaces, so can make for treacherous driving conditions. And of course, snowfall can also make for poor travel too, so just take care getting from point A to point B. Kate. Thank you, Alistair. That's all for now. For more extended video and full online articles, stay tuned to saltwire.com. And you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. I'm your host, Kate Walker. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.